Okay, we're going to be continuing on with our soldering desoldering series. Today I want to cover uh, a little bit more advanced techniques. Um, and this isn't going to be a really long video because it's only covering one topic. But that's removing through hole components from circuit boards that have huge ground planes on one side or the other, or both. Um, not that it's important, but you can see we're working on a Communications Power Incorporated, or CPI. It's a CP400. It's a mobile radio. As you can see the technology. You know, these back in the day, these things were the you know in the CB world, these were the absolute top of the line radios. Um, yes, the little heat sinks here are not original. I've added those to protect a few of the ICs that uh, run rather extremely hot, but. Uh, like I say, the main thing we're covering here is you can see how the how much ground plane there is on these boards. It's a huge amount. And trying to get one up and what I'm doing to this is your repairs and restoring it, I'm replacing all the electrolytic capacitors. Well some of these electrolytic capacitors, the, the ground side, um, you know, the negative is attached to huge ground planes. And even with a proper desoldering iron, it can be extremely difficult to get all the solder sucked out from the other side of the board to get the lead loose. Um, I've run into that myself many times. Um, you'll desolder on this side, you'll get all the solder up through most of the hole because these are three plated boards, you know, double sided, but the lead is still stuck down on this side. And you know you can crank the temperature up on your desoldering iron, but the problem you stand then is is delaminating or you know breaking the circuit trace loose from the from the substrate or from the actual circuit board itself because remember it's epoxy so you get your temperature up too high for any extended amount of time you stand a really good chance of doing trace damage um, now when you're doing I actually did some of them on this some of these only have a pad like right here's one there's only a pad on this side and then on the opposite side it actually attached to the ground plane so there's you don't want to lift off that tiny little solder pad on this side so if you turn your heat up too high, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to delaminate that small pad that's on this side while you're trying to melt the solder on this side of the board, and you end up pulling that pad off, and odds are you're still going to have solder holding the component down on this side. So now you don't need um, any additional really expensive tools. Um, now I'm going to be using PACE equipment. Um, I'm one of those people that you know learned a long time ago you get what you pay for and it doesn't get more much more expensive than pace but you also don't get any better quality than pace um, now what we want to do is to help increase our chance of getting these components out because all these capacitors here are original but you can see there's huge ground planes here <laughs> same thing on this side for a lot of these parts so you know like uh, yeah this capacitor here it's attached to this large ground plane on this side and then you've got the same thing on the other side so what do you do to try and get some supplemental heat on the other side and I'm not talking about a soldering iron because trying to hold a soldering iron on the lead while you're trying to come in with your desoldering iron on this side can be rather difficult so what would be nice is is if we can clamp onto that and that's exactly what we're going to do now um, there are three tools from the PACE line of equipment that we can use. Um, you can use their, you know, uh, resist tweeze. Okay, so this is a pair of tweezers. They have no power to them right now. These are controlled through the, um, it's actually turned on and off with a foot pedal down off of the, uh, the main control module. But what this does is it actually supplies a voltage to each of these leads, AC voltage, a pulsed AC voltage. And when you touch the leads together, actually let me just get a old cutoff lead here and I can show you. Matter of fact, let's get, oh, I just have to have a big chunk of copper wire in there. All the better. So, nothing, solder will not stick to these. What they're, these were actually designed for was basically soldering turret terminals. So you would clamp onto the turret terminal with one of these, you know, press the foot pedal, and then this becomes basically whatever is clamped in between these is what actually basically becomes your soldering iron tip. So because it's what actually heats up, that's why it's called resistance heating. So you know, if we clamp onto that, 
and then I push my foot pedal down on the floor. I'm also going to sit here and grab my solder. So, okay. Now I can actually feel it humming through my fingertips here. And you can see, see the smoke coming off? You see that? And as soon as I take my foot off, it takes the voltage away and that starts to cool down instantly. So, we can use these. Now, the problem with these is, is depending what type of circuit you're working on, these would be fine for tube type circuits, but if you're working on solid state stuff, um, especially the CPI, if you're working on the, on the main motherboard there that has that impossible to get PLL chip, um, or actually it's a microprocessor, EEPROM, um, you definitely don't want to be using something like this because, because of the voltage. Now they also make uh, another hand piece, basically looks the same. I'm not even going to bother grabbing it because, like I say, it looks almost the same, but it's called the um, conduct tweeds. Now basically what it has is, is two loops with a little pad on each end. But the idea is, is that the voltage is going through those two loops. So you're not actually, the voltage isn't going through the component. It's going through, basically it has two, almost, they almost look like Weller soldering iron tips, the old pistol grip style. But still, it's, you know, it's a tweezer style, and you can heat with that. Now something, most people, of course, are not going to have something like that. But uh, most people that actually work in shops nowadays are probably very familiar with working on surface mount components. And a lot of people that work on surface mount components are going to have something like this. Now this is Pace's thermo tweeze. I've got about five or six different ones of these. Some of the older, you know, i got the black ones, the gray ones. And got a boatload of different tips. I have tips for taking, uh, you know, quad flak packs out. There's all kinds of tips you can get for these things. But these tips right here are for removing SMD components, you know, like little chip resistors and capacitors. Well, they also happen to work extremely well for supplemental heating on stuff like this. Now, you don't have to go out and buy yourself a several thousand dollar paste multi-process machine and you know several thousand dollars worth of different hand pieces. Um, pop that back in the holder down there. What you can get, and I've had these things laying around for years and years. These are some cheapy, no-name Chinese, okay, tweezers. But it's the, basically the same thing. Now these, if I was going to use them for this, honestly, I'd bend these tips flatter because you can see they don't come together like the, the paste tweezers do. But same principle. It's just basically two, you know, two heating elements here that heat these ends up. But you could do the same thing with these. And you can pick you know, these cheapy, and these just plug right into a wall. No external, you know, the only thing you're stuck with is it's 40, what is it, 40 watts. So, you know, you can't control the temperature to these where with, through the paste system using their tweezers, I can turn, it actually has sensors in the hand pieces there. And I can set a temperature offset depending what tips I have, and I can control the tip temperature very precisely. But, like I say, I don't want to make this too long. So, here's basically the procedure you use for this. So, you're going to come over to your one side. Of course, I really have to work around the camera here. Eh, I'm trying to <laughs> only set my face on the damn camera. Okay, so I come in on this side, and then I also come in on this side. You see now? See how I can jiggle that? Now, I don't want to pull it out until I've desoldered it. Okay, and the reason I do that is I don't want to pull it out and then try to desolder. Because if I do that, any solder that's on this side, once I pull it out, I've lost a lot of that thermal... I guess you could say the thermal connection, which is the actual lead that goes through to the bottom, and that solder pole might cool on the top side, or you know, on this side of the board, before this has a chance to actually suck it out. But like I say, let's try and grab another one here. Try and look around the camera again. Yeah, and this one's on a really big ground plane. Like I say, I can grab it on this side. And there we go. It's just that simple. So there you go. There's just a little bit of a advanced technique for removing components. Like I said, you can see how big the ground plane was on this side. And like I say, big ground planes on this side as well. But uh, this technique works really well. Um, 
you know, it really cuts down on the chances of doing damage to your circuit boards and just frustration, because trust me, it can be extremely frustrating. And probably the most frustrating thing is getting the component out, no problem. Hell, all you need to do that's a, a soldering iron. You can just heat the solder up and pull the component out. The problem you run into is trying to get all that solder out from the hole. Using this method, it's not a problem. Because you stick your desoldering iron on there, stick your tweezers on this side. Like I say, don't pull this out until you've started to vacuum with this. So, you know, while you're sucking, when you then if you can pull it out. And that's the whole idea, have it running at the same time. That way it'll suck that molten solder out. Because like I say, if you pull this out, there's a chance because these huge ground planes, it could start to cool. You know, once, once your tweezers have, you know, pulled this part out, there's no longer any heating going on this big trace on this side. So, like I say, I hope this helps somebody. Like I say, I've, uh, for a long time, I used to pull my hair out trying to get uh, components like this out and trying to get the holes out so I could get new components in. And I started doing this technique and, oh, man, just made my life so much easier. So, hope this helps someone out.